In this video, we'll be looking at what it's like to close a client worth $10,000 to my agency. It actually took two calls to close this particular client. On the first call, I got a feel for the project and the clients. Then the client actually asked me to prepare a slide deck showing them how we would run their paid campaigns. Now, I don't usually do this because it takes a lot of time, but as this was a really good project with a high ad spend, I decided to make an exception. I created an in-depth slide deck showing the most up-to-date Facebook and Google ad strategies that my team and I will be deploying on the campaigns. Now, there's about 10 minutes at the start of the call that I skipped through that shows things like my team members and case studies, which obviously are confident so I can't show them. That being said, we start the call right at the juicy bit as we get into the campaign structure and the details of how they're going to be run. Before we get into it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as over the coming weeks and months, I'm going to be creating a lot of high value content completely for free right on this channel. So without further ado, let's get into the call. We'll start off with Facebook. So we're going to be running multiple campaigns and using an overall strategy, but you'll see here that through different campaigns and different, you know, CBOs, ABOs, things like that. So this is the top of funnel evergreen campaign, and this will be the overarching campaign. We're going to use this to scale. The way we do that is by adding the winners from each of the, the supplementary campaigns into this one. And then, you know, this can be done for, for like, so the destinations, if we're, we're running multiple campaigns for your different uh, competitions on different destinations, this is, we're all going to implement them into this. By using the winners from each one so obviously with your marketing background you're well aware of top of funnel middle of funnel bottom of funnel that's just a little graph there just to show how it is in layman's terms mm -hmm. so as we go down then the creative testing campaign abo and shopping campaign this will consist of the same audiences copy headline but different creatives so the reason we keep that all the same is because if we use different within each one we wouldn't really know what works so it's essential we keep that constant while running split testing and then we can ensure what variables are working well in terms of this is going to be created here. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out what works well in terms of content. As you know, every business is different. The examples I showed you there, content would be very different than what we're going to use for yours. But mm -hmm. the big advantage we have is you have a huge, huge you know, detail in your pitch deck and we know exactly what you're going for. For example, you know, fun, energetic, playful uh, and things like that. And something that we want to really implement into our campaigns is the whole charity thing. We think that is a really, really good USP and something that people would, you know, really jump on. You know, if, if you're looking at an ad for a competition company and one is a nonprofit for charity and one is obviously for profit, you know, I think that's a really, really good USP that we can play on. Yeah. So we'll be implementing that. So that is the ABO uh, shopping campaign. The advantage to this is this is recently launched by Facebook. So I'm not sure how much you know about, you know, actual ad sets and ads within Facebook. They're constantly changing, but they tend to push new ones as they're launched. Mm -hmm. So typically we'll use one copy when, with a variety of creatives, as we said. And then as we find them winners, we'll be constantly updating and replacing the creative testing. I think you mentioned on our first call, you will have a lot of creatives or we will have access to them in almost like a vault. So we'll be able to constantly be going through them. Um, and whilst we're working, we'll be getting the most out of the budget as possible because we don't want to really be putting a huge pile of budget in one or two campaigns. We want to be spreading it along. In terms of middle of funnel and post-purchase campaigns, they would more so be if we had customer lists. So... At the start, we're obviously not going to have customer lists because this is a startup. However, that's something we look at the more we get down the line. Obviously, you know, if you're looking at a, a 10K ad spend, we're going to get customer lists built pretty quickly. So just something to keep in mind. We can't really implement that at the start because we don't have a customer list. It's more so going to be getting all that traffic and all that engagement in so we can find our target customer and our most cost efficient customer in terms of acquisition. Does yeah. that make sense? So the shopping campaigns, is that, the, 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 I'm not familiar with that actually. This is, it does look like it's something new. I, I don't really get involved in the sort of the nitty gritty, do you know what I mean? In terms of ad mm -hmm. setup and the different nuances that you, you can do within the, the yeah. platform. So it, is that Facebook's alternative to Google Shopping? Is that that type of you know? Is it is it is it I mean, could call is it kind of like an e-commerce kind of marketplace within your own? Um, it's not dissimilar. It's not it's not dissimilar. Okay. So essentially, what you would do is you set up the code on your website, and then Facebook can essentially pull all that pull all the information from your website and set up like a multiple choice. For example, if this was let's say you had Disney World, let's say you had the Bahamas and let's say you had a shopping trip to New York and um, Facebook can automatically pull that and then have the multiple options. So say you're scrolling down Facebook, a shopping ad would differ from a normal ad. So let's say there was an ad set up for New York, there would be copy related to New York. There would be a picture related to New York. A shopping ad would be like three or four in a car sale. So you'd have New York one, Disney World next. 
yeah. this was what it would be like for you. Whereas if it was e-commerce, it would be, you know, multiples of their best selling products. Yeah. Okay. So these are, are these like the dynamic search ads, not the dynamic search ads, because that's, that's, that's Google, isn't it? There's the, the, uh, the responsive shopping ads that, 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 that Facebook deliver is the same sort of thing, isn't it? Is, is, that, is that their variation of that where it's all, it's yeah. all done dynamically? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's okay. quite similar. Yeah. It would qualify, even though, I mean, it is a Shopify site. The, you know, they will be set up as, as products and that type of thing. So, but it's not, it's not your everyday e-commerce site. It's not like we're selling handbags or shoes, for example, where yeah. it's easy to, you know, to see that as a, as a product carousel and it's dynamically kind of intuitively, you know, yeah. delivering, um, you know, products that have been viewed and other recommended products and that type of thing within that same carousel. We could still set things up in that way for this type of business, can we? Um, exactly. to, to, yeah. Yeah. So as I say, as, as opposed to the products, it would more be like the different holiday destinations. So maybe New yeah. York 1, Paris 2, Disney World 3. And the reason we would be pushing this is because, as I say, because this is a new thing, Facebook are really pushing it. As with all their new platforms and all their new different campaigns and strategies, they're going to push them at the start to see if they work. Yeah. So we'd be using that traction and we'd be using, you know, you'd probably get lower cost per clicks and things like that. So that's why we're, we would push that at the start. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So retargeting, which is obviously a huge part of any campaigns. So this campaign would obviously consist of people who engage with your socials and on, you know, people who take a valuable action on your website. So with the big organic content push that we had discussed, we think this would work really, really well. Depending on when you guys launch, depending on how much engagement we have by the time the ads launch, that would obviously vary in how, how much we could use this. But I'm sure, as you know, pre-iOS 14, things were a lot easier. Now we really, really have to kneel in on our retargeting audiences to get the, the lowest CPC and the, war, the warmest customers and most efficient customers. So this is where we entice people with the offer. They are aware of your brand, obviously, if we're pulling them from social media or maybe they've interacted with a Facebook post. They just need that little bit more to, to get them to commit. Things like video testimonials, things like previous contest winners, these are all great things that we could possibly implement here in terms of building trust. Because obviously, if you get that face, if you, you know, if you have a, a video testimonial of a, a woman who brought won a, a trip to Disney World, that would be fantastic. I think that would work really, really well. Yeah. In terms of getting people to re-enter, we think this could be a really, really, you know, high rewarding ad and keyword on Google. So if someone, I'm sure as time goes by, you know, let's say six months down the line, we're going to have a huge pool of people who have already entered. And if we, that's just going to be quick wins, low hanging fruit. If we go after them again, they're going to be the warmest audience available. So that's something I think we should really target down the line. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Now let's look at an ad set level in terms of, you know, more niche down in terms of who we're actually going to be targeting. So we're going to have three different ones. We're going to have broad, we're going to have an interest stack, and we're going to have a lookalike stack. So the team and I have just been spitballing in terms of what demographics we would be targeting here. But we think a really, really good one could be parents of children over a certain age, particularly for destinations such as Disney World. This could be a really, really lucrative targeting for us. Obviously, we can play around with this and, and see what sort of broader ideas we have but you know targeting the parents especially for that disney world prize could be really really lucrative so the targeting will basically be broke down into three as i said broad interest and lookalike audiences so ad levels bringing it back to the top of funnel evergreen campaign we will be testing as much as possible at the start obviously we will have to discuss where we want to be sending that traffic to in terms of landing pages and things like that because that will be important i'm not sure where had you personally been thinking of sending the traffic were you sort of optimizing your home page to be that landing page or were you thinking of specific landing pages per destination um I think it depends how complex the ad setup is going to be. I think initially the top of funnel will go to the home page. Retargeting audiences will be a little bit more specific if we can take them through to individual draw pages or, you know, if it's uh, so, we'll, yeah, we'll probably need to look at that once we, we start to shape the structures of the campaigns, including the yeah. retargeting. Okay. Well, we can have a chat on that at a later date. As you've rightly said, at the start, top of funnel probably won't be massively important. If we funnel all that through to the main website, that would make sense. But I think for us, we don't want to be running too many ads per ad set. Again, iOS 14 sort of obliterated all of this. And previously, what you could do isn't really what you can do anymore. So for us, consolidation is key. We don't really want to be running any more than four ads per campaign. This allows stability. It allows you know to do testing without burning through as much cash as possible. Because if you start branching out to 
seven, eight, nine, ten ads per campaign, you're really, really going to burn through your cash really, really quickly. So we don't really want that. We want to get as much out of the cash as possible and be efficient with it. So that is Facebook. Did you have any questions on that? That's sort of the overall strategy for Facebook. Yeah. So in terms of the different ads that you'd test, so you'd be looking at image ads, you'd be looking at carousel ads, you'd be looking at video ads, different formats of video ads, long, long, you know, long form video, short form video, that type of thing. Is that, is that, is that what you'd be, you'd, you'd just be looking at that and then seeing what the, the audience responds to, and then we can optimize the best performing on that Correct. side of things. But in terms of the different campaigns, we, we, we could have, Broad campaigns look like, uh, sorry, interest interest related campaigns. So we could have different ads within those campaigns as long as we haven't got more than about four different types. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we could we could mix up the bear. So if we wanted to, yeah, to have more video in one campaign to test what that looks like as opposed to more image led, you know, ad types in 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 other campaigns. I, I, I don't know. I'd leave you guys to probably try and figure that out if we, you know, if we get to that point. But it's um, yes, it's it's it's. Because normally I think you'd you'd have a lot more when you t- t- test against you know seven or eight different variants. So that's come right down now in terms of four different ad types. But it yeah it makes sense I suppose. Um, yeah yeah, it's just post iOS fourteen. It's just so difficult to test to that scale. Before yeah. obviously with the easier tracking, it was just so much easier to do it. But right now what we're finding in our different campaigns, anything more than that, we're just getting average results across a lot of ads rather than good results. So it's all dependent on ad spend. If you have that, if you're going in with a a relatively big ad spend in month one, which is 10K and you have a lot of high quality creatives that we need to sort of put out there and see what comes back on them, we can consult and we can have that conversation. Obviously the first couple of weeks we go in and before we launch anything, but again, I'm not sure with your organic strategy, how how much you're going to have. If there's a lot there, then we can have that conversation closer to launch date. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. So Google. Obviously, Google and Facebook differing slightly, but we are going to go ahead and do that keyword research using our softwares. Obviously, we had the conversation the last day about how this can be slightly tricky and you can pay very, very big CPCs wouldn't really be relevant to what we're doing in terms of prizes for holidays. So we would take that into consideration on our competitive density, you know, the search volume, the attempt. I have a, a bit of a screenshot in terms of example search volume that we did already. For the top of funnel and the middle of funnel campaign, we would categorize the keywords into ad groups based on the relevancy to the brand. So that brings back to that query you had the last day in terms of we don't want to be burning ad spend in really, really expensive keyword brackets, which you could easily do in this because as you rightly say, holiday keywords probably some of the you know most popular keywords in the world. So we would really take that into consideration and be careful in that because we don't want to be burning that ad spend. In the search campaign, we'd be using enhanced cost for click bidding strategy until we get enough data to maximize and make that more efficient. And the reason we do that is because the volume of traffic, volume of traffic, sorry, before moving over to focus on converting bidding strategy, again, comes back to the previous point that we don't want to really be burning through a lot of cash on keywords that aren't relevant to what we're looking for. So we would really have to be very, very, you know, on with this. Um, the first couple of weeks, the first couple of months, this would be really, really important because without really, really concentrated management of this, those keywords could get very expensive. And especially if they're not relevant to what we want to do, we'd have to stay on top of that. So this is just an example of keywords we run on a couple of the softwares we have. Obviously, you know, holiday offers, special offers, holiday deals, these are all really, really relevant. And you can see they're quite popular. Like even something like cheap package holidays could be relevant with a big search volume there of 10K and a relatively low keyword difficulty. Um, But again, the team and I have been discussing, like there there will be a lot of keywords that aren't necessarily looking for a prize giveaway or, you know, win a holiday trip that I think would, could work really, really well. But as you can see here, there are more than enough where people are looking for sort of competition wins, travel competitions, packages, holidays. So that was just to give you an idea there. And you can see like the bottom half there are relatively low in terms of keyword difficulty. Top half getting a little bit more difficult, but again, still a lot of room to maneuver there. I don't think that's the end of the world. You could definitely get some quick wins on those ones too. Yeah, cool. Okay, great. So 
this is just again going into a bit more detail on the strategy the top of funnel search campaigns at the start we'll be looking to get some cold traffic to your website we'll be using more information on the top of funnel keywords on this one we'll just be splitting these into different ad groups based on relevancy the ad groups then will focus on particular keywords and then increasing quality score as we get more and more information through so just a bit of a background on the structure of the campaigns how we're going to get that cold traffic to the website then in terms of top funnel middle of funnel on google will be more transactional so again like those keywords we were looking at will be driving warmer traffic to your website with bigger search intent so you know holiday giveaway holiday prize these kind of things and um, yeah. we're going to split them into different ad groups again based on relevancy and then obviously things like quality score and keyword density is going to be a big driver in terms of what keywords we're going after here bottom of funnel on google these would be things obviously like including your brand name again retargeting campaigns not going to be hugely relevant at the start because you're a startup mm-hmm. but obviously you're going to be going at this aggressive so if you were sitting here and telling me, you know, we're going to be using a couple of grand ads, Ben, and we're building up, blah, blah, blah. After, you know, I would say 12 months, you would probably need to wait minimum to get enough information and to get enough data to run these campaigns. With the aggressive um, stance you're taking and you're, you're going to go off this pretty quickly, we can start probably using these a couple of months in because we're going to be getting a lot of data really, really quickly. And these are going to be the really, really lucrative quick win campaigns because it's going to be really, really driven by your brand and search intent. When people start becoming aware of who you are, they're going to be searching for you. So we can target them and get really, really low cost per clicks from that regard. And then finally, we are going to be running a performance max campaign. So with assets that you can provide, we find a lot, a lot of success with other campaigns where we've been running more of a full funnel approach, you know, display, shopping, placement, all of these kind of things. Again, like the Facebook Shopping Plus ad, this is a new campaign that Google has released. So they're really, really prioritizing it over other campaigns. How do they do that? Lower cost per clicks um, and really, really lower spend in terms of cost acquisition for you and I who are running after it. So we would recommend it's not something that, you know, it's relatively new. It's not something that's been around a long time, but we would recommend pushing this at the start because as I say, those lower CPCs with newer launch softwares and options that Google have would work really, really well. That is us, I believe. So we'll stop sharing and we can have a chat. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's 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 good stuff. I mean, it's it's pretty much you know what I was expecting in terms of the structure and the makeup. Um, I mean, did you drill deep into the numbers? Just in terms of viability and a bit of due diligence, knowing that there's enough scope within Facebook audiences, interest targeting, those types of numbers, looking at the kind of Google breakdowns and just having confidence that that the market's out there, that it's a scalable marketplace potentially to be able to run, you know, volume driven activity, big spends potentially. So, you know, yeah. if it was something that needed to scale quite quickly, if we can get enough transactional data into building those lookalikes you know, as quickly as possible and being very intelligent with the retargeting, then yeah, does it does it feel does it feel to you just with the initial sort of piece of research that you've done that it is something that could scale based on the audience sizes? Absolutely, yes. We looked into right. engagement and sort of CPMs on, on Facebook and it looked very, very promising. It looked very, very promising in terms of what you know the audience that you could go after. There's just so much scope. You know yourself, holidaying, it's a massive, massive niche and definitely one that you could take a huge chunk out of, especially with, you know, the investor back sort of attitude and stance you're going with. You have a lot of um, capital behind you, a lot more than a, a usual startup would. Usually that sort of pigeonholes people, and cages them in in terms of what they can, what they can test and the different strategies they can use. So the CPMs, impressions and things like that, engagement we've seen on Facebook, just in the research we were doing for them campaigns look really, really good. In terms of the keyword research, like you can see, just from even putting in keywords like holiday price, holiday giveaway, there's a huge opportunity there in terms of keyword density and keyword difficulty. I think as well, there's a massive opportunity personally in going after keywords where people might necessarily be looking for prizes, but again, not being too sort of sporadic with it and pulling it back a bit and not getting caught up in those high, high you know, CPCs where it's just people looking for general holidays. So I think there's massive scope here. Uh, this A project like this really, really excites me. I've worked with a couple of investor back projects before and they tend to do quite well because usually, usually the issue with the startup is they don't have the capital to to really go after ads and make it work. So mm. um, something like this is, is really, really exciting and um, I think it'd work really, really well, especially in tangent with your organic strategy because that's only going to increase conversions. 
so I think something like that would maybe make you more comfortable with it. Yeah, I think so. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to cover your hours, but you've also got to run, you know, make sure that you're running commercially, um, you know, yeah. um, in, in a proper way. So, yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to to lose out. I think it's, yeah, it's hard to justify the difference between a 20 grand spend and a 50 grand spend a month when the campaign's actually running very fluidly. Um, yeah. At that point, everything's all optimized to conversions. You know, okay, there's the split te- the testing phases. You're, st- you're always testing, but you know, the the the, the kind of the heavy grunt work has, has kind of receded yeah. a little bit from that point. So, um, yeah, you know, everything should be a bit more fluid from that point forward. So, um, yeah, okay, all right, no worries. Um, I mean, in terms of in terms of next steps, I mean, are you able to send me that presentation? Dylan, so I've got a PDF copy of it. Would that be okay? Of course, to, yeah. To get yeah, a copy yeah, no of problem. that, I can get you that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, so I, I think I mentioned. I think I was honest when we when we first spoke. I'm, I'm not just speaking to yourself. There's a couple of other guys that you know, a couple of other um, parties involved in 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 the process. Um, so from that point of view, I just need to take it back to the investors and and the, and the team, and, and we'll, 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 we should be making some decisions. Hopefully, sort of by the end of next week. Um, right. because we need to move quite quickly on this one i think the the positive thing to say is is that it's not just about that's not the only opportunity potentially available mm-hmm. for someone like yourself and i am very much looking for people like yourself you know kind of nice close knit business not too layered not too you know kind of heavily filled with procedures and everything else where i can work on a interactive one to one basis with people like yourself do you know what i mean I'm yep. not, you know the reason why i'm talking to um the likes of yourself at, at, at your kind of um you know your, your size and, and and you still got the results to prove it but what you're not you're not layered with um, you know, the bigger agencies that I deal with on the digital marketing side of things for me, they're too big because I'll just end up talking to a junior account manager and I'm not really getting involved in the, de- yeah. you know, in the day-to-day yeah. detail of it. And that's um, that's yeah. what I really need to do, regardless of whether it's, you know, it's fine or it's any of my other clients. So there you have it, a really unique insight to the sales call inside my agency. Now, I didn't actually get to close on the call. However, about a week after the call, I received this email and we were good to go. Not only were we successful in that particular job, but the client was so impressed with the slide deck, he actually referred me on to different clients he knew. This is a really organic and powerful way to grow your client base and something we'll be getting into in the coming weeks. This was also a really, really good sales call for you to watch as the guy had a really in-depth marketing background and he was asking me lots of detailed questions. Tactical questions around CPMs and search volumes that you just wouldn't be getting on normal sales calls. It was a win-win because it kept me in my toes and was a really good insight for you to see how to handle difficult questions. If you enjoyed that behind the curtain look of how a successful sales call can go, make sure to hit the subscribe button and give the video a like. I also have a free five-day email course on how to start and grow your agency linked in the bio. So if you're struggling to land your first client or have been thinking about starting your agency, go ahead and click the link. We get the client acquisition, team building, and much, much more completely for free. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.